Hi, it's me again. Now, I said there was going to be one more interview, and we're finally getting to do it, which is with the Spring King and Queen of the Great Plains Renaissance Festival. And we're going to talk about, um, they're going to tell, tell me about their uh, Chivalry for Children program and uh, why, it's, you know, why it's a great idea to bring your kids down to the uh, RenFest and see this particular unique portion of it. Um, though they also do do the Chivalry for Children program at other locations from time to time. Anyways, uh, so Chris and Alan have been doing this for quite a while, and I'm going to just turn the camera to them and let them take it away. Well, actually, the Chivalry for Children program will be 20 years old in 1999, so if that qualifies as quite a while, I'd say that's quite a while. It originally started at the old Newman University Renaissance Festival because Alan and I truly felt as king and queen that knighthood should be earned. It shouldn't be something where you walk up to the king or queen and say, hey, make me a knight. All of the other knights in the world today and in the past had to earn that accolade, so we feel the kids should have to earn that accolade as well. We wanted them to at least understand what knighthood was about and to have to attend uh, a lecture effectively to learn what we thought knighthood was about. And that's how the program started. It has grown and evolved over the, the decades into something that we think is uh, uh, a pretty good guide to how to be a good person, specifically a good knight in the 21st century. When we crafted the program originally, we contacted several fraternal orders and, and, and other experts in the areas of history and sociology and uh, psychology and tried to craft a program that was universal in its focus. So the virtues that we chose were charity, courtesy, courage, honesty, humility, loyalty, and perseverance. And almost every martial order in the world, including the, the Shaolin, the Samurai, uh, some of the Mideastern orders have one or more of these virtues as a keystone uh, value or virtue for the members of that order. And so we wanted it to be something that everybody could relate to something in or something to in the program. Anywhere that a military order was expected to support the, the uh, society, the virtues that we chose are expected of the members of those military orders. The emphasis varies. For example, the samurai place a lot more emphasis on loyalty than do the European knights. But we still expect our European style knights to be loyal. We expect uh, greater sacrifice out of uh, samurai warriors than we do out of European knights because they were a greater part of the social order. But any time a military order is a part of maintaining the social order, these lists of virtues were expected, sometimes more, sometimes less. We did not include amorphous concepts like nobility and specific religious concepts in our list because we wanted to be able to appeal to kids of all uh, economic groups, nationalities, and religious groups. And I'm here to tell you that Muslim can be as good a knight as a Catholic, as uh, a Protestant, as an atheist, as, as long as they have these seven virtues in their worldview as a major part of how they conduct their lives. They will be a good person and they can be a good knight. Part of the matrix of the program is the fact that we're trying to teach kids to go from what we used was the Kohlberg Moral Development Scale, which basically goes from level one, which is you're doing the right thing. We call it the hot stove treatment. You're doing the right thing because you'll get punished if you don't do the right thing. All the way to level five, and that is where you do the right thing because your particular code of chivalry tells you what is right and wrong in a given situation. So the chivalry program is designed to help kids define their own role models and then to move from one to two to three to four and maybe even sometimes into five by doing the right thing because it is the right thing to do because they have developed within themselves that this particular behavior is what I want to do in this given time. So that... So many role models in the modern era uh, have no fixed morality. 
that they do not help children make good choices. Um, Deadpool acts out of vengeance. Uh, Spider-Man is, is always doing things because he wants to impress Mary Jane. And on and on and on. And these aren't the right reasons. And there are even role models that they hold up that cause children to make bad choices. And part of our point is to give them the tools to make good choices so that they can become better people and better citizens. That it? That's it. Awesome. I want to th th give a big thank you to the both of them. Um, when they're here at the Rimset Fest, it's pretty much non-stop um, action for them. It doesn't matter whether they're current king and queen or the... What's... What do you guys just have when you're not king and queen? We're the, the royal parents. The royal parents. Um, it doesn't matter which role they're in. The Rin Fest for them is always one of the busiest times, so having a chance to sit down while they're still in their garb and in the Chivalry for Children uh, tent is, is kind of amazing. Um, but also I wanted to say, I've sat through their program because I was curious about it, and um, as an adult even, stopping and listening to the ideas uh, that they present is really cool. So if you get a chance to bring your kids, definitely do it. If you get a chance to kind of eavesdrop in on it while you're at it, great idea. You might want to do that. Anyways, um, of course, thing is, this is the end of the Renaissance Festival for fall. So they'll be back in spring, and they also have uh, other events and other places they do the Chivalry for Children program. Do you, have, you guys have anything more coming up? Well, we always done uh, about a month before the Renfest at uh, Exploration Place. Uh, we are always available for um, uh, Boy Scout Blue and Golds. Um, any group that has a strong moral compass, we can come out and present. We not only do medieval and renaissance style chivalry for ch children program, we can craft our program to be uh, Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or what are some of the other ones we've done? Star Wars. Star Wars. As long as it's got a very strong group of characters that they can use for moral models and that we can fit it in with, you know, compliance with the fair use clause of the copyright law, we'll go ahead and use that mythos. We've done Narnia. That's true. So. I love being High King Peter the Magnificent. <laughs> you could. And as you can tell, they also have a lot of fun and enjoyment themselves doing it. So, um, if you can, keep a watch for them online. You guys have a Facebook page, right? Yeah. Uh, catch, uh, look for them online at, uh, on Facebook at uh, Chivalry for Children. And uh, check out to see where their next thing is at. Or if you're a group looking for something like that that uh, falls into the category that Alan mentioned, uh, definitely get a hold of them. Have a great one. And I will see you next fair. Bye.